nearly five billion years ago, our solar system began to form. It started as a huge, hot, swirling cloud of dust and gas. This dust and gas was left over from supernova explosions that had taken place billions of years earlier. The spinning motion of this enormous cloud caused the solid particles of dust to clump together. As more and more of this material gathered together, the increased density and gravity caused the giant cloud to collapse and flatten out, which generated even higher temperatures. As it became hot enough, a nuclear reaction began. A mass of solid matter formed in the center of the flattened cloud. This was the origin of the star we know as the Sun. Most of the material of the original cloud formed the Sun. But some leftover dust and gas collected to form the planets, moons, comets, and asteroids of our solar system. It took about 100 million years for the solar system to form. The solar system is made up of a central star, nine planets, over 60 moons, and many thousands of asteroids and comets. The sun's gravity keeps all the other objects in the solar system in regular orbits around it. Everything in the solar system moves around the sun in what are called elliptical orbits. These are orbits that are not perfect circles. Because their orbits are not circular, Sometimes the planets are farther from the Sun than at other times. Asteroids and comets can take hundreds of years to travel from the far reaches of the solar system to pass close to the Sun. The Sun is just one of the 100 billion stars in our galaxy, called the Milky Way Galaxy. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy, like the one shown here. Our solar system and star are located far from the center of the Milky Way, out in one of its arms. The galaxy is 100 light years across. The Sun is about 30 light years from the center of the galaxy. In terms of size, the Sun is considered just an average size star. There are many stars that are hundreds of times larger than our Sun. The Sun is made up of layers, and over 90% of it is composed of hydrogen. The Sun's energy is created in its center, called the core. Temperatures in the core are estimated to be 15 million degrees Celsius, or 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. This extreme heat and pressure have a tremendous effect on the hydrogen atoms, which are combined or fused together into helium atoms. This process is called nuclear fusion and it releases an enormous amount of energy. Maybe you have seen Albert Einstein's famous formula, E equals mc squared. The E stands for energy. The m represents the mass of an object, and c stands for the speed of light, which you will remember is 186,000 miles or 300,000 kilometers per second. What this means is that even a very small amount of material can release an incredible amount of energy. The nine planets in our solar system are usually divided into two groups, the inner planets and the outer planets. The four inner planets have some physical characteristics in common. They all have rocky surfaces with cores made of iron. They are called terrestrial, which means Earth-like. They are small planets. During the formation of our solar system, the atmospheres of the inner planets were blown away by the sun's powerful solar wind. The atmospheres that were blown away were made up of helium and hydrogen gas, which are the chief components in the atmospheres of the planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Those planets are found in the outer solar system. Volcanoes erupted on the inner planets. As hot lava and gases escaped from the planet's molten cores, new atmospheres formed to enclose these developing worlds. 
meteorites bombarded all four inner planets, causing large holes, called craters, on their surfaces. Mercury and Mars still show the signs of this massive cratering. But weather conditions on Earth and Venus have erased evidence of this cratering activity. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun. It is the second smallest planet and is only slightly larger than Earth's moon. Temperatures on Mercury are severe. The side facing the Sun can reach 800 degrees Fahrenheit, or 427 degrees Celsius. And the side in darkness can reach minus 292 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 180 degrees Celsius. One reason for such a wide range of temperatures is the fact that the planet has a very thin atmosphere that cannot hold in the heat from the sun. Because its atmosphere is too thin to burn up approaching meteorites, the surface of Mercury is scarred by the impact of countless collisions. A year on Mercury is 89 Earth days long, since this is the time it takes the planet to go around the sun. The strange thing is that Mercury rotates on its axis very slowly. It takes 59 Earth days for it to spin around just one time, which makes for a very long day. We know a lot about Mercury because of spacecraft sent to orbit it. Mariner 10 was launched in 1973 and photographed much of Mercury's surface. The second planet from the Sun is Venus. It is often called Earth's sister planet because they are about the same size. Venus is the closest planet to Earth. One unusual thing about Venus is that its day is longer than its year. It takes the planet 243 Earth days to rotate once, so its day is over eight Earth months long. Venus orbits the Sun in only 225 Earth days, or about seven and a half months. So the planet's year is actually two weeks shorter than its day. Venus has a very thick atmosphere that insulates it and traps the sun's heat. This causes temperatures of around 840 degrees Fahrenheit or 450 degrees Celsius. Carbon dioxide makes up most of the atmosphere with clouds of poisonous sulfuric acid floating above the surface. The Magellan spacecraft was an American probe launched in 1989 from the Space Shuttle Atlantis. It orbited Venus from 1990 to 1994 and created a detailed radar map of the planet. This was our first accurate view of Venus, since its atmosphere is so dense that it is impossible to see the surface without radar. Scientists on Earth have been interested in the conditions on Venus because of what is called the greenhouse effect. Venus's thick atmosphere allows the sun's radiant energy to hit the planet's surface and then reflect back. The insulating effect of the atmosphere traps the heat and doesn't let it escape into space. As a result, the temperatures on Venus are the highest of any planet in our solar system. Some scientists are concerned that a similar condition could develop in the Earth's atmosphere if certain gases continue to build up. Atmospheric pressure on Venus is 90 times stronger than the atmospheric pressure on Earth. A Russian spacecraft sent to Venus in 1982 landed on the surface and sent back pictures for 57 minutes before it melted and collapsed from the high temperature and intense pressure on the planet. Earth is the third planet from the Sun. It is called a living planet because it is constantly changing. It takes the Earth 365 and one quarter days to orbit the Sun. This is one Earth year. To make up for the fraction of a day, every four years we add one day to the calendar 
making a 366-day year. To do this, we extend the month of February, making it 29 days long instead of 28 days. This event is called a leap year. The Earth rotates, that is, it spins around on an invisible axis once every 24 hours. That is the length of an Earth day. The invisible axis runs through the planet between the North and South Poles. As the Earth spins, different parts of the planet receive different amounts of sunlight. Night occurs in areas of the Earth as they turn away from the Sun and experience a total loss of sunlight. The Earth is tilted on its axis by 23 and a half degrees. This tilt is what gives our planet its seasons. When the Earth is tilted toward the Sun, then the Northern Hemisphere, that is, the region north of the equator, experiences the seasons of spring and summer. When the planet is tilted away from the Sun, the Southern Hemisphere experiences spring and summer, and the Northern Hemisphere goes through fall and winter. The northern and southern hemispheres have opposite seasons. Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun and is about half the size of Earth. Iron oxide in the Martian soil gives it a red appearance. In 1971, a probe called Mariner 9 was launched into orbit around Mars. It sent back over 7,000 pictures of the planet's surface. In this century, many probes have been sent to Mars to photograph it from orbit and to even travel along its surface. These remarkable robotic landers are equipped to gather all kinds of information. Spirit and Opportunity have drilling equipment and the ability to analyze the composition of soil and rock samples. In addition, the two rovers are equipped with sophisticated cameras. These wheeled marvels are controlled from Earth and are capable of driving to different locations on the Martian surface. Imagine having the ability to control a vehicle that is so far away. Decisions for the rovers take many minutes to travel from Earth to Mars. Because of the delay, there are computers on the rovers to make decisions based on input from onboard cameras. Mars is home to many interesting geographic features. The largest volcano in our solar system, the Olympus Mons, is on Mars. Olympus Mons is 15 miles high, which is almost twice the height of Mount Everest. There is also a canyon system on Mars that makes the Grand Canyon look like a ditch by the side of the road. The Valles Marineris stretches 2,500 miles, or the same distance as a trip from New York to Las Vegas. In some places, the canyon is seven miles deep. Mars has ice caps at both poles. These caps are made up of a layer of water ice and a layer of dry ice which is carbon dioxide at a very low temperature. The atmosphere of Mars is very thin and consists mostly of carbon dioxide. The average temperature on Mars is minus 55 degrees Celsius or minus 67 degrees Fahrenheit. However, temperatures vary greatly depending on the planet's position in orbit. When it is farthest from the sun, its temperature measures minus 133 degrees Celsius or minus 207 degrees Fahrenheit. When its orbit brings Mars closest to the sun, the temperature can reach 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Mars has two small moons named Phobos and Deimos. Some meteorites found on Earth are believed to have originated from Mars. At some time in history, Mars was struck by an asteroid that shot some of the planet's surface out into space, and eventually, those rocks landed on Earth. Scientists spend a great deal of time studying these meteorites, a long-ago gift from our neighbor, the Red Planet. <laughs>